Welcome back to the Techno Communism Conversation. <clears throat> I am going to uh, talk about um, uh, a book that I read uh, recently by Nick Dyer Witherford um, uh, called Cyber Marks. A little bit longer title than that, but I recommend it highly. Um, I'll link it here. You can um, uh, go to the um, uh, uh, Christy Mowry um, uh, YouTube that I uh, link to. Uh, here and um, uh, listen to the full audiobook uh, from there, or you can uh, find it <clears throat> uh, in a variety of, of other forms, of course, at the public library. You can purchase it. Uh, this is a book written uh, by a socialist, so you could support them by purchasing their work, which I recommend generally. And for capitalists uh, or other sorts of fascist sympathizers, uh, but certainly or for our struggling comrades. Um, um, and uh, uh, I thought I would add some notes to uh, Cybermarks, uh, which is not fresh in my mind. I've since read 30 or 40 other books um, on related subjects, um, but um, 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 I thought I would add some notes, nevertheless, uh, to some concepts there to connect it to um, uh, the concept of a large language model uh, chatbot and human uh, collaboration um, of the kind that's often described on this channel uh, 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 as the AI agentic class which is suggestive of a large number of people um, collaborating um, with one another and these um, uh, semi-autonomous AI agents um, but um, we could just as well um, uh, describe as I will at the end of this show it in terms of um, a more limited proof of concept uh, that um, uh, we could describe as a, a multi-agent systems utilizing these AI agents and I'm going to talk a little bit about auto agents a hugging face group that I found a hugging face project uh, that I found with uh, some folks mostly in China it would appear uh, doing uh, a thing that's pretty consistent with uh, what I've described here um, and um, um, uh, uh, an important concept here with uh, building uh, something like this is um, uh, one that's lost on nearly everyone it would seem and it is that uh, any advanced uh, computing um, um, of any kind necessarily will not become a runaway AI uh, this is movie logic that makes no sense no matter how powerful it becomes, uh, no matter how hidden it is, its agenda could become, which is significant, already arguably transforming our world, as we would see entities like Palantir or highly sophisticated advanced computing-driven um, militarists um, planning in advance um, most aspects of the present uh, Gaza genocide causing approximately 250,000 deaths, a number radically underreported, um, um, according uh, to a variety of folks, um, uh, trustworthy folks like Ralph Nader, Chris Hedges and such. Um, and uh, most uh, people on the ground agree that the number is well over 100,000, not the official uh, numbers coming out of um, uh, Western Imperial outfits that say the number is closer to 35,000. Um, and um, um, but none of those people are really uh, tracking that um, uh, this um, and it was in the place in the form of a variety of contingency plans coming from people like Ballantyre uh, saying um, one, sooner or later you're going to have and um, the Israelis knew about October 7th uh, shortly before it happened uh, they allowed it to happen um, there's a good deal of evidence of that that's not really conspiracy theory um, uh, similarly, um, the idea that uh, organizations like Palantir um, uh, 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 planned this, even not knowing uh, necessarily uh, what exactly would happen on October 7th, is also a fact. Um, and that is why you would have effects such as hundreds of thousands of people dying and yet so little action being taken, uh, effectively because uh, this kind of AI is able to help you uh, do that sort of thing. 
And that's not something uh, the technology should be doing. And it flies in the face of uh, this kind of CIA, to CIA talking point uh, that's more or less just um, 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 exerted from the writings of 60s Star Trek or, or science fiction writers um, where um, an AI war is somehow more humane than, than um, a traditional war. Uh, that, of course, makes no sense. And there's no humane war. Um, and all of the uh, uh, Western wars are 100% superfluous. The United States has been, um, for 100 years, the seat of anti-communism, attacking um, any country uh, that would, say, run some sector of their economy uh, on the principle of uh, having a humane and sustainable uh, sector there, or a humane and sustainable economic system generally for their citizens. And they're not allowed to have that in their own country, and they would be uh, uh, generally um, uh, have uh, persons of influence in that country murdered um, or removed from influence um, and um, uh, reverse uh, that in a variety of ways, including uh, uh, a dozen examples of just um, direct warfare with the United States or open warfare uh, fomented by the United States through some proxy like a right-wing militia. Um, and um, uh, this, so none of that would happen if uh, you didn't if you didn't have the fascist West doing that stuff, right? And what would happen instead in this world is um, we would have already had an AI takeoff um, um, of the kind uh, that I have tried to describe, um, not because it's absolutely the best um, uh, path uh, for computer scientists uh, to. Um, uh, so-called so -called artificial superintelligence, but because it is um, um, the best path for us with these kind of impediments that I've described. Um, that is why a project like these AI, this AI Agentari at a distributed autonomous organization uh, making use of multi-agent systems, um, particularly um, LLM agents, um, which is fundamentally an anarcho-syndicalist project. I'm not an anarcho-syndicalist. I am a um, scientific socialist. I support uh, for the 21st century as long as and as long as necessary um, the existence of state socialism and over other uh, more regressive forms uh, that still exist, namely uh, capitalism, um, vestiges of feudalism and monarchism and uh, other things that fall short of, uh, of the scientific social, uh, uh, socialist trajectory. Um, um, uh, so this, um, the point that I was making before is that um, no AI, um, LLMs or otherwise, uh, should be seen as um, uh, replacements for humankind or a threat to humankind, it's movie logic. Um, uh, these are tools. Unfortunately, they're be tools being used by um, uh, the most evil human beings uh, you can nearly imagine, and most tricky kind of human beings you can possibly imagine. Um, uh, but that, and so this, from this derives, um, you know, what happens when these people who have been the seed of anti-communism, uh, murdering um, 40 million people in anti-communist wars, that's the number that you could lay at the feet of just the United States, uh, 40 million people in anti-communist wars and wars of theft it just in living memory alone. It's not including all the folks uh, going back uh, to uh, centuries past. Um, um, what happens when these people have uh, godlike uh, powers of uh, artificial superintelligence networks? It's not good. And so when people talk about um, um, AI safety, and AI is an X risk. Um, they are alluding to that essential problem, uh, but they have they want to keep working within this um, uh, fish, high, more techno fascistic milieu. Uh, so they have to uh, avoid actually describing uh, the problem, which is not advanced technology. It's advanced technology being controlled uh, by by dangerous uh, people who do not. Uh, uh, support the abolition of private wealth or um, uh, the end of empires or um, 
uh, troubling nation state formations. Um, and um, um, uh, so to contrast uh, these uh, people with what uh, could emerge in the course of the 21st century and what almost certainly will emerge in the course of the 21st century, very hard, we could be facing a, um, a Fermi paradox uh, kind of uh, collapse of civilization. Um, but short of that, um, even knowing what we know about, say, capitalism's climate apocalypse, the climate crisis, it's very hard to imagine um, no one would remain or that something like um, um, an artificial superintelligence network would not emerge at some point in the course of the 21st century. The question is, will you still be alive uh, to, to benefit from it? A thing that could potentially, say, bring about universal super longevity um, or in, uh, incredible effects beyond, but um, just uh, getting to that, to that baseline where everyone can live as long as they want would be a nice thing. Of course, we're nowhere near that, and uh, technologists who talk about concepts related to uh, longevity escape velocity um, they never, those are not the people who talk about the billion folks um, who are nowhere in the vicinity of longevity of escape velocity on this planet, the billion folks who don't have potable water or shelter or proper food for their entire lives. And so then they do not only live long enough to uh, reach longevity escape velocity, they don't live long enough to have an even normal life. Uh, they die a short number of years later. Uh, because of those conditions. Those are uh, material conditions caused specifically by the operations of finance capital and um, imperialism. Um, without those things, the very f purpose of the United States killing those uh, 40 million people is not just because they're finger-twiddling villains. Um, it is uh, to um, uh, appropriate those resources into the hands of the ruling elites and finance capital. Um, and um, um, the um, uh, so this this alternative then of in the agentariat um, um, is a world where human workers are empowered uh, dramatically and interacting with uh, things that might in, in short order come to appear to be quite human in their intellectual cap capac capacities and if you're wearing smart glasses in their actual appearance. Um, um, and um, uh, but uh, to do this right, we have to support things like open source development, which I've talked about a lot on this uh, program. Um, we have to see the um, uh, dramatic departure from uh, the um, uh, those very finance uh, uh, financial capitalists holding um, intellectual property um, to the democratization of information. Uh, we need to see um, socially good advanced computing development across all, all of these sectors, transforming all of these sectors into things uh, can, uh, more consistent with that essential socialistic principle, the humane and sustainable economic system, not seeing our species go extinct uh, because of certain limited number of sectors that we do not choose to rein in, not seeing a billion people live in the sort of misery that I described. Um, um, uh, but an equ equitable distribution of uh, benefits based on the strength of these uh, new tools. And I said on this show uh, quite a few times that um, a close, a relatively close approximation of a thing like this occurring in the past uh, was the development of the Cyber Sin Project uh, by uh, the uh, socialist friendly government of uh, Salvador Allende. And um, um, of course, that government um, uh, was overthrown by fascists in the fashion that I described, uh, U.S. Uh, proxies. Um, and, um, um, and that technology was not so sophisticated. It was telex machines, <laughs> um, uh, a thing of another, another century. Uh, uh, not a, advanced computing even by the standards of 1971 when this uh, project got off the ground. Um, uh, the point being, um, if we have uh, things which are, by most benchmarks are generally intelligent in 2025 and we are not uh, capable of uh, building an economic system uh, that 
would function in the way that uh, Salvador Allende was able to build a planned economy in 1971 uh, such that we would be able to do things like prevent the extinction of our species. What kind of idiots are we? What are we even doing? Um, and that's been the focus of this show uh, for for uh, over recent months. Um, and, and to a high degree uh, prior to that time. Not the only uh, thing that's ever discussed. Uh, there's many areas of... Um, uh, relating to material conditions and economic justice that are touched upon here. Um, um, the, uh, I watched a thing uh, where uh, Dr. Van Gertzel, um, who is a learned person in these areas, and a person who um, inspired me um, to want to become a revolutionary cybernetic socialist, even though I don't exactly count him as a a scientific socialist, um, nevertheless a fairly big influence, um, um, where he was talking about the so-called AI job apocalypse, job apocalypse, I don't know how people say that, <laughs> um, jobless apocalypse, and um, concept of, of jobs displacements as, um, as something necessitating further social programs which is true, and uh, necessitating um, uh, other special steps of a significant kind uh, to do with uh, economic uh, uh, policy overall, uh, which is true. Um, um, and I, I think that his operation for one that is more mainstream, this agent Ariad concept, for example, I've spoken to quite a number of people, and um, but it still only comes to some hundreds of people who have become uh, familiar with this AI agenda class concept uh, because of my outreach. Um, um, Dr. Gertzel has something more on the order of a, um, um, a following of hundreds of thousands of uh, people across social media. Uh, so, um, um, and his net, or his network does rather. And so, um, um, uh, that, 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 considering that uh, there are some of these benchmarks for the IAI agenda class being met in what he's doing in recent years, um, that puts him more or less in, in um, uh, as as a, a, f a mainstream figure for a computer scientist um, who is um, who is operating in this way compared to other technologists who um, will also talk about basic income. Uh, but there is a tendency to do this thing that I've talked about on the show before of a limited hangout where they will talk about a basic income. Um, but when politicians or billionaires push back against uh, the idea, or more particularly when it becomes a potential um, um, uh, legislative uh, reality or um, uh, uh, there's a cultural moment that could lead to its, it being implemented, such as in 2020, when there were lockdown conditions and a basic income could have been rolled out, um, um, uh, these people are nowhere to be found. They they use this in a limited hangout way. That is a strategy uh, wherein um, uh, uh, the more fascistic-minded folks will uh, try to take them, make themselves more palatable to ordinary people by having a, some handful of things uh, that they um, that seem to be good that they say they like a stop clock phenomena. They don't really like them at all, uh, for the most part. I'm not saying this of Ben Gertzel, but of technologists generally. Um, and um, um, uh, that um, uh, that is that is a central problem uh, with people who are not uh, for uh, the abolition of finance capital and private wealth and uh, and elitist uh, institutions in this vein. Uh, is that um, they can identify a problem? They can say, "Oh, I, I don't, I don't want um, a million people uh, uh, to live on on the street or in their cars. Two million, three million people living unstably housed in the United States or more. Not just the people actually out of doors, uh, but uh, you know, you're living out of doors if you're living out of your car. Uh, you're unstably housed if you're in a relationship with somebody uh, just because." 
um, uh, if you left that relationship, you wouldn't have a place to live. Uh, you're unstably housed by a certain metric if you stay in a job that you don't like. Uh, abuse, you know, abusive, abusive boss is no different than an abusive partner. If you, in a certain sense, if you, um, um, uh, because, because, uh, so this is the world that we live in, where um, almost, almost everyone, by a certain definition, is living on that racist edge, uh, not just um, uh, the actually unhoused that are counted, um, and um, um, people who are not scientific socialists. Which, who are, which is people who are defined by an understanding that all these problems derive from um, um, a financial capital as opposed to uh, things being held in common. Uh, you know, what is, a, what is a communist, right? They're, they're kind of uh, related to uh, the name of the, um, the Paris Commune. Uh, also, kind of just uh, uh, older word or origin of communalism, right? If you just called communists communalists, um, things held in common as opposed to being hoarded uh, by a small number of people, uh, you wouldn't think that would be a controversial set of concepts, just as you think you wouldn't think that a people in a country other than your own having humane and sustainable economic system uh, would be allowed, uh, would, would lead to, would anyone accept that it would lead to uh, so, uh, places like the fascist United States or other North Atlantic imperial powers invading that country uh, to change the kind of form of their economy, or you wouldn't think that uh, we would allow something like neo-colonial um, uh, powers, which do much the same thing, like the uh, like the IMF and World Bank, um, basically cheating at monopoly to um, uh, keep. Uh, con uh, countries in the global south from having an economic system that's able to benefit uh, their their citizens is not because they don't want anything to benefit people it's because they don't care about that they care about being able to extract resources through financial uh, capital um, uh, machinations into the hands of the ruling elites the functioning of the this world that favors the one percent and um, people seem to just roll over for this to such a degree uh, that you have um, almost near certainty that if we don't take dramatic action within the next four and a half years, according to every credible climate scientist, um, that, um, that humanity will, uh, after that time, be uh, locked into a climate um, uh, runaway uh, overheating uh, climate crisis, a death spiral, if you will. Uh, that's not a good situation to be in. It's not a situation that is inevitable at this juncture. Um, uh, but if we don't do that, many billions of people will die. If we don't change the economic system, and that's relatively small things, these are things that could, could be done by almost any economic system that has ever existed, right? You don't uh, have to be um, the most hardline communalist, so to speak, as I've said. Uh, to abolish uh, single-use plastics and um, and um, motor vehicles uh, using combustion engines, you don't have to um, um, uh, change the the form of livestock systems or uh, remove them and replace them with facsimiles, or just have uh, stipulate that people eat plant-based uh, things, or have people accept that they must eat uh, plant-based uh, things only. Uh, the second cause. Of, of the um, sectors, um, uh, the second worst cause of the, of the climate apocalypse after uh, is livestock systems after fossil fuels. But of course, all of those sectors, like uh, the problem of, um, <clears throat> of warfare itself, not being a problem without fascists, without people dedicated to finance capital and uh, theft in the ways that I've described. Um, that wouldn't those things these things wouldn't be problematic or exist. You wouldn't have single use plastic. China has banned single use plastics in 1979. <laughs> you know, they knew that this was not good <laughs> for for the better part of a half a century. Um, and um, um, the um, uh, so um, um, the real problem 
um, or not these things that could be attributed more to lifestyle features, uh, but it is the United States and uh, North Atlantic powers um, uh, military forms, the United States military industrial complex uh, most notably. Its only job, this military industrial complex, is to protect super polluters and it is itself the worst super polluter. Uh, uh, so why are these things, why are these things tolerated? Um, it's not very clear. Um, there, there's only so much uh, that um, Project Mockingbird type brainwashing could do in this situation. It's done an awful lot, uh, but um, uh, can you really trick everyone on Earth into accepting their own extinction um, on that basis? It's not too clear what's really happening in my mind, uh, but I believe that it could be stopped. I do believe that. Um, uh, shifting, let's uh, change gears a little bit and talk about uh, this concept of multi-agent systems. Generally, I touched on this in a recent show. Um, this is a, a possibility for uh, collaborative uh, problem solving with uh, specialized agents, which could take a variety of forms, but uh, the one most relevant uh, today would be uh, those based on large language models that are open source and can be modified uh, to purpose. Um, and uh, this modification and this uh, uh, collaboration would uh, then uh, lead to something that we would call decentralized autonomous organization. Um, and that um, also takes a variety of forms, but here we're talking about uh, collective uh, decision making on the part of the human actors in this network. Um, and the uh, projects and undertakings and resource management, uh, which falls more heavily on uh, the AI agents who are increasingly insightful in doing such things, but will never, at least not in the next few years, uh, be truly insightful in anything. So if you were to task them to be fully autonomous um, um, in this organization, uh, they would go off the rails pretty quickly. Uh, so it would be necessary to uh, keep humans in the loop at this time. But even if it weren't, I would say that's a fairly reasonable thing to stipulate, that humans uh, should be uh, brought in uh, to do um, this kind of, of labor to grow this uh, sort of thing, but also just because um, what it, what is this world of ours with living creatures um, uh, without um, um, this this conceit that human beings maybe should have a role in it. <laughs> We're the only talking living creatures. Um, um, uh, the, I, the whole thing kind of breaks down when you don't really have um, some kind of uh, humanistic focus. Um, the, whatever the failings of humanism might be, and they are vast. Um, uh, so, um, um, but uh, of course, the central idea with this decentralized autonomous organization, as described as the AI agenda class, and the emergence of this is that this um, would require almost no labor from the human beings relative to the AI agents. I've said that. If you have a GPU, and um, you know you could be Sleeping Beauty, you could just uh, turn on the computer, be sleeping all the time, uh, answer a few emails throughout the course of a day or week, and you are now a high-level uh, operative uh, beyond any such that exists in the world, uh, I, uh, to my thinking. Um, and um, um, uh, this. Um, uh, so, again, multi-agent uh, uh, systems uh, for uh, task execution, um, decentralized autonomous organizations um, for guidance and governance as such um, within this AI agenda class. Um, that leads to um, one of the reasons why I decided to do this show tonight. I was kind of taking a break for a day or two, even though I said I was doing the show every day uh, since uh, a pest came into my life and asked me not to do the show. My response was to hang up on them and um, start doing the show every day <laughs> instead of every couple of days. Um, and um, um, uh, but the reason I wanted to do this sh uh, show tonight was because I found uh, something on Hugging Face uh, called Auto Agents, uh, which is a collaboration between uh, some uh, computer scientists in seemingly a few different countries, uh, principally in China. Um, um, although their exact location of any uh, one of the collaborators is not clear. That's not always clear from, say, a white paper or anything. Um, 
um, uh, uh, this auto agents um, is an LLM agentic project of uh, that uh, demonstrated uh, some of the basic capabilities of the small group uh, that are pretty consistent with what I've described as the AI agentic class. So I have the emails of these people. So I'm thinking, should I email them and tell them I'm going to... Um, they'll probably... They, there's a good chance in that situation that they'll ask me a bunch of questions about computer science that I won't know the answer to and that they won't want to work with me. <laughs> or, they'll, or they'll see... The, or I'll say, hey, watch this show. I talk about this. And they'll say, that's really not of interest. We're not uh, wanting to talk about politics. Or maybe they'll um, find out something else about me and they won't want to work. So it's, it's a recent problem, right? I'm basically blacklisted from tech. Um, not specifically with these guys, but generally um, uh, for, for being a dirty fucking commie for the most part. Um, and um, 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 I'm good with that, actually. Um, uh, those uh, people who I would have worked with uh, for the most part are uh, imperial fascist garbage. Um, um, what, you know, what, what uh, benefit man... Um, if he gain the world but lose his soul um, um, uh, so this conversation uh, focusing a little more on multi-agent systems decentralized autonomous organizations as it relates to uh, this AI agentic class concept and relating it then to um, uh, a real world undertaking at, uh, that already demonstrates an essential uh, mo many of the elements of it is a proof of concept as, as I understand it um, I've looked at a lot of their materials. It's not not the thing. Um, uh, this, I think, can allow any of us uh, to start to uh, better understand a path forward for um, uh, human beings. And I don't, um, as absurd as that may sound, I don't think it's um, over the top because um, advanced computing is this most powerful tool that has ever existed, hands down, uh, for uh, fascistic purposes, as as at a present, putting us on on this further trajectory of um, yet another um, existential risk uh, kind of problem, uh, but it is also uh, the most powerful revolutionary tool that's ever existed. That shouldn't even be a controversial uh, thing to say. And yet, scientific socialists don't really talk about it very much. But uh, the pra the fact that um, um, in 2026 or 2027, anybody no matter what their agenda, will be able to duplicate a few thousand human beings, human minds effectively, in practice, uh, to, for, for some purpose or another, uh, that should tell you that this has um, a revolutionary potential, bourgeois revolutionary potential, or counter-revolutionary potential, but revolutionary potential in the I ideal. Um, uh, so Hugging Faces Auto Agents, uh, to me, was an exciting find uh, this week uh, because I think it would be... Um, it answered some questions for me about, I thought this, you know, I've been known to be confused from time to time. <laughs> I've, been, I've known myself to be confused that maybe um, is better, better to say. Um, and uh, so I, and thinking about uh, the AI agenda class, I didn't really want to just be telling this science fiction story. I wanted to uh, be pretty clear on the idea that this is actually a real thing. Um, and I think that um, a further exploration there is necessary, and dramatically more development is absolutely necessary. But I think that um, for 2024, as early as the end of 2024 or 2025, uh, this vision of building something that has uh, this uh, transformative potential toward revolutionary cybernetic socialism is a reality. And I hope that you will um, uh, help me to arrange that and uh, adjust your thinking and plans accordingly because um, this world is going to change quite a lot. Thank you.